I greet you all and I'm very happy that so many people are interested in our topic today. And uh, I thank uh, Mr. Orton who organized this meeting uh, from the eco-social student group site as part of the Hochschultage. I thank Professor Weber as our president that he personally is involved in this evening. Uh, of course, I thank Dennis Meadows to be here. Um, that he is here today has a special reason because this morning he was awarded uh, the German Cultural Preis, the Deutsche Kulturpreis aus diesem Jahr wurde heute Morgen in München in der Stiftskirche der Residenz an Professor Meadows überreicht. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Applaus Now there is uh, something very special about uh, Dennis Meadows. He is a uh, a typical old-style professor. And uh, so, sorry. <laughs> and uh, he told me, okay, I have this prize, but I want to see students and young people, and I want to be in a university. And so I thought, wonderful, is easily done. There is Ulm, at least as important as Munich, and there is a good opportunity to do it here in the evening. That's the reason that we today have this opportunity with, with Dennis Meadows. Now, what I, of course, associate with him as a long-term member already of the Club of Rome is the same experience of our president. For me, this book also had an enormous importance and I read this book as a quite young boy, and at that time, it started to change my life. I was, when I was 16, very much interested in population and overpopulation. And uh, the interesting thing is that at that time, the, uh, the size of humankind was less than 50% of today. And that shows how much happens in a very short period of time. Since uh, the year 2000, in, in 18 years, the world population has grown by 1.5 billion people. This is three times the population of the European Union. Three times in 18 years. So, if one wants to understand the world, it is this dynamics of population growth, consumption, technology, climate effects, energy, all this goes together. And uh, interesting enough, the Chinese CO2 emissions 15 years ago were only half of what they are today. Today, the Chinese have more CO2 emissions than the US, Europe, and Japan together. <clears throat> the Chinese CO2 emissions per person are higher than the European emissions per person. Yeah, this is unbelievable. But the Chinese have 7.5 and the Europeans have 6.8. However, the Germans have 10. But the Germans believe they the good guys. Yeah, this is we have a romantic image of ourselves. We think we're the good guys, and the world should learn how we do it. If this world would act as we would be a disaster. It's nice we have the French, because they have five tons. And the French with us together average is 7.5 is the Chinese. The only problem is there is 10 times as many Chinese as Germans and French together. And this is, let's say, the kind of 
mathematical feedback interaction of difficult issues that are not so easy to understand for humans if they just use their brain. For us today is clear what is needed. One needs mathematical models, dynamic relations, feedback loops. And of course, in the end, for all this, one needs computers. And the computers do the computing and they give us the numbers and they show us what will happen. And here is where Dennis Meadows and the MIT and Forrester and the Club of Rome comes into the game because when they started the whole issue, it was for the first time. Things that for us now are completely self-understood and are part of courses at the university. At that time, it was completely new. It's a long time ago. It's around 1970. And around 1970, the world was also in a difficult situation because we had these tensions between East and West. The conflict between East and West even the risk of atomic war, nuclear war, was a big topic. But also the population growth already then was a, was a big topic. And uh, there were people that started to think what will happen with the climate. And in 1972, there was the first world conference on protecting the environment. This was the Stockholm Conference, 20 years before the Rio Conference. And 72, something happened. There was this conference, and the rich countries wanted to protect the environment. And then a young lady stood up. It was Indira Gandhi. It was a young minister president of India. India was only independent for a few years. And Indira Gandhi told the rich countries the following. She said, listen, guys, you are rich. And you are rich by stealing the whole world. And now that you're rich, you tell us to be nice to the environment. What you essentially say is stay poor to protect the environment. Then you stay rich and we stay poor. The environment is protected and you are rich in a protected environment, is wonderful for you, is a disaster for us. We will not participate. This was a conference that was a total failure. There was no result. There was no final communique. The, the world community was not able to come to a joint program to protect the environment because of this fundamental difference between the rich world and the developing world. And to be honest, essentially nothing changed since that time. I, I discuss this always with Professor Töpfer. He was in Stockholm, he was in Rio, he was in Rio plus 20. And he says it's always the same issue. We now talk about environment and development. And this is what we call sustainability, but it's only words. We, we not really have a progress. And it's really a difficult issue, difficult to understand. And at that time, two people came together. And uh, the one was Marco Picei, and he was from the Fiat and Olivetti family, and he was among the owners of Fiat and Olivetti. And the other one was Mr. King. He was the scientific director of the Organization of Economic Cooperation, which is OECD, which is the organization of the rich countries. So, so Marco Piche and Alexander King, they joined, they were afraid, they wanted to change something. They found partners and they created then what is today the Club of Rome. 
And they did this 51 years ago, and 50 years ago in Rome last year was a big celebration for 50 years Club of Rome. Everybody knows the Club of Rome. Everybody knows Dennis Meadows, and both topics are very closely related. The reason is this publication limits to growth. Now, it's, it's interesting to ask how this publication came about. This club wanted to bring a strong new message. And it was clear for them they needed a new approach, something new. They were invented by the Swiss government. They met in Bern. They considered what to do. And they were in contact with MIT, with an older professor, Forrester, with uh, Dennis Meadow, which was a very young professor at that time. And uh, somehow it clicked. They came together. And uh, yes, the uh, MIT people proposed this dynamic methodology to describe the main feedback loops in the world and to use the computer and do simulations as a quite new thing. And uh, the Club of Rome people said, yes, it's what we do. We will try that. Germany was strongly involved. At that time, Mr. Pestel, Eduard Pestel, who at one time was the president of the University of Hanover, then became, he became the minister of science for Niedersachsen. As the minister of science for Niedersachsen, he was responsible for VW Foundation for the VW Stiftung. VW Stiftung had money. If you want to do a new science program, you need money. So Mr. Pestel and the VW Stiftung organized the money to do this MIT cooperation with the Club of Rome. And yeah, I would say in life, one needs luck. And in life, one needs the right people at the right place. It is called serendipity. Serendipity is a form of intelligence. It's the intelligence to understand in a second that there is a big opportunity and to pick it. An easier version is a song which says, love is like a train to catch. So it means sometimes in life, there is the opportunity to have to catch it. What, what I admire at Dennis is he took the opportunity. As a, as a young person, very young person, he took this big program and for the first time ever executed this type of global analysis to see what will happen. So, so big compliment for this achievement. You're famous for that. You will always be famous for that. The Club of Rome is famous for that. What happened is this book was sold 30 million copies, was translated in 30 languages. And if we look back from today, the main statements of the simulation scenarios of this scientific effort have proven right. And with the climate issue we have today and with these issues in China and with the next wave of problems coming with Africa and India and Pakistan and other countries, this will even prove more right. So yes, it worked. It was a methodology, a new, it worked. It is today, it is a kind of standard but it was completely new then and it worked. What not worked was the reaction of people to what was now available as a new knowledge. Humankind didn't really react. And uh, I know that Dennis is not so lucky with humankind. 
and thinks is a kind of stupid humankind with a lot of intelligent individuals, but as a, as a system, humankind didn't really react as reasonably one should have expected it. And uh, of course, every day we have the same problem. We must consider what to do now in the situation we have now. And Dennis is also always working on that. So, so in a sense, he, he invested his, own, his whole life as a researcher, as a professor, as a, the, the top executive of scientific organizations, of scientific networks worldwide. He put into this topic, he, he was honored with many prizes like the Japan Prize and the Conrad Lorenz Prize. So it, there was a lot of coming back, but it also meant he had a whole lifetime of fighting a fight with the right message and being confronted with a societal situation that didn't react as it reasonably should have. Dennis, we now look forward. You will describe us what is 47 years of limits to growth. Wonderful that you are here. Thank you very much for coming.